Hi, today it's raining, but it's not a problem. I'm going to be sitting in this wooden hide behind me, so I'm going to be very dry and comfortable. And I really don't want it to be sunny, especially in this sort of environment. If it's sunny, you get streaks of light and dark shadows where all the trees are. Better that it's overcast. I'd perhaps rather it wasn't raining, but it's not really a problem. And with modern digital cameras, we can shoot at such ridiculously high ISOs that you can photograph in almost any lighting conditions. So this isn't my hide. It belongs to a friend of mine, Peter Priest. We've been working together on the same estate now for about 20 odd years, and we've got various hides set up around here, but he, he runs this one. I'm hoping to photograph Sparrowhawk, but more likely it will be buzzard but we're just going to have to sit in and wait and see what we get. Typically, I'm going to do about a, a four hour session. Sometimes it's much longer, but when you're doing something like sparrowhawks and buzzards, you know you've got a, a long wait and four hours is typically about the minimum you would spend in the hide. Before a buzzard will come down, it's quite likely to sit in nearby trees and check the site out. Make sure it feels safe before it drops down. As a consequence of that, if your hide is out in the open, in the middle of a field, with buzzards you typically need to get in there under the cover of darkness in the morning and stay in there the whole day. The advantage of this side is it's in a woodland. The bird can't see you from a distance. So you walk through the wood, you get in the hide, you do it reasonably quickly and you stay in the hide once you're there, but you don't have those long dark to dark weights. Ripping the pigeon apart in slow motion. This is using the Sony A1, the 200 to 600 zoom lens and 120 frames per second. Slow motion, five times slow roughly. In the days with mechanical shutters, a noisy digital SLR, you used to wait for the buzzer to start feeding before you took a picture, and then you'd just take one picture at a time. Today with mirrorless cameras and total silence you don't have to do that. As soon as the bird arrives you can start taking stills pictures, or just leave the video running as I'm doing now. But just a couple of stills. The lighting was quite dull, so these are taken at 5000 ISO and 800th of a second with the lens wide open. Now this buzzard has been feeding for 25 minutes, something like that, and it's becoming a bit full. It's not going to keep feeding forever, and then it's going to fly away. Now it's a windy day, the wind is coming from behind the hide towards the bird. Therefore, when that bird takes off, it's going to fly towards me. They always like to take off into the wind. And the chances are, I will know when it's going to fly away, because the bird will go through its pre-flight checklist, which basically means it will excrete. And you'll see all that white blob come out the back, and it will turn and face into the wind, so you know it's going to happen. Now, if I was using my old Canon gear, I used to have the 500mm, the 600mm, the 800mm over the years, um, I wouldn't be able to get that shot because it's a fixed focal length and I'd be too tight in the frame. I wouldn't be able to zoom back. All the years I owned those lenses, I always yearned for a big telephoto lens that was a zoom. And now I've got one with this Sony 200 to 600 and the Sony A1, I can zoom back. With my Olympus gear, if I was using the 300mm, I wouldn't be able to zoom back. But you know, even with those two camera systems, the chances of success in getting a flight shot of that buzzard taken off, very slim. With the Canon gear, what I'd have to do is turn to manual focus. Let's say I was using the 100 to 400 zoom Mark II, which was a wonderful camera lens. I could zoom back to put it small in the frame, ready for it to launch into flight. But then I'd have to put it into manual focus and focus, let's say, about four or five feet in front of the buzzer and wait for it to launch into flight, press the button, and that, the latest Canon camera I owned, one, one DX was it, um, 
expected 12 frames per second RAW, 14 frames per second JPEG. My chance of success would be slim doing it like that, but that's the best I could do. With the Olympus gear, if I was using the 100 to 400 zoom, the Panasonic zoom that I've got for my Olympus, I could zoom back again, um, but I'd still have to manual focus. The autofocus wouldn't cope with the bird flying towards me, so I'd have to manually focus, but I could use the Pro Capture which is a lovely system to use. The ability to press the button after the bird has flown and still get the picture. And that would, if I was manually focusing, that would give me 60 frames per second. So my chances of success with the Olympus would be higher. But with the Sony A1, my chance of success, excellent. The chances of failure, pretty slim. This will autofocus on that buzzard as it launches towards me. Today it's dull, it's miserable, there's hardly any light. So I've put the ISO up to 25,000 ISO, giving me a shutter speed of 2,000 of a second. Sometimes it's going up to 2,500 of a second. And you know what? I rate my chances of success very high. I've just got to watch out for that pre-flight check starting, so I'm ready. starting to look as if he's finished. He's not feeding so enthusiastically anymore. I don't think he's going to stay for seconds. I think he's going to take off. Yeah, there he is. He's just excreted. He's looking as if he's going to take off. So here we go, the camera's taking pictures at up to 30 frames per second, it's probably slightly less than that. ISO is set to 25,600, the shutter speed was 2,500 of a second, the lens was wide open at f5.6, and I'd zoom back to 218mm to get the bird in the frame, and every frame was sharp. What an amazing camera the Sony A1 is. And what do you think of the noise levels at 25,600 ISO? The bird turned around, landed on a branch again, had a quick look and call, and then flew off. Thanks for watching.